ZX Spectrum is an iconic British computer from the 80s. It's a wonderful little machine. This is my two-part series in taking the Spectrum 48K and making it work for the modern day. We're going to look at the Div MMC, we're going to look at fixing the memory, and we're going to do a composite mod in this video. In the second video, we'll take a look at programming it. So here is the box I picked up my 48K from eBay and was fortunate to get the original wrapping complete with WH Smith sticker. There's some instructions on the back and inside we will reveal some Sinclair branded polystyrene. Fantastic! Inside the case we've got the 48K unit itself and quite a few little catalogues and in a lovely looking manual. We've got a how to program in basic guide I think and we've got a set of cables. We've got the power cable, an audio cable and a video cable. The first thing we should do is test the power supply. This is a pretty old machine and I want to make sure that this absolute unit is pumping out the right number of volts. I'm getting 12 volt volts out of this supply, which seems too high, though I'm told this is common for the original power supplies. It should really be around 9 volts. However, it hasn't blown up but yet at least. The first step in modernising the Spectrum is to replace the modulated TV output with a composite video connection, essentially bypassing the modulator entirely. This model let us plug into modern monitors and capture devices. Taking apart the Spectrum involves five screws on the outer case, two ribbon cables on the inside, and a screw or two holding down the motherboard. Be careful when you release the top part of the case though, as the ribbon connectors will still be connected. I've already released them in my video here though. The modulator is on the top left of the board. Here are the two wires that send the signal back and forth. We need to unsolder those, and then unsolder the entire unit, removing it from the board. We'll use the case, the modulator case itself, to hold our composite mod. Inside the modulator, we can see all the electronics that convert the signal from the spectrum into something that an older TV could tune into. We'll remove this board and use the connector of the case itself. The wires connect to the outside world here, so we'll unsolder those and remove the inside of the board, keeping the case. Unsoldering the modulator needs quite a bit of heat and force, as the two main attachment points are quite large. I'm using my soldering iron on maximum heat settings and a screwdriver here, but a heat gun would also probably work quite well. Underneath the modulator you get this lovely hidden logo, date of issue and the model number. It's very nice. The attachment points are here and here, and the connectors for the signal are here and here. We'll need to clean those out with a solder sucker before putting the modulator back in place. The composite mod itself is just a single capacitor, a 100 ultrafarad 10 volt capacitor in this case. I found this modification on Brian Hoskins' website, there's a link in the show notes and on my blog. We'll use one leg of the capacitor itself to poke out of the modulator box and then onto the board, with the other leg connecting to the composite video socket. A little bit of trimming and soldering is needed, but it's fairly straightforward. We can then reassemble the modulator case, including the little shield that sits on the socket itself and faces the outside world. Finally, we can solder the modulator back onto the board with some fresh solder. And here it is, the moment of truth! Our Specky is plugged into a small monitor via a composite video cable. We plug in the power and... bingo! We have our lovely 1982 Sinclair Research message. Part 1's done. So 
So let's take a look at this package from the Netherlands. This is the Div MMC Pro 1 that I'm using for my ZX Spectrum. And the best part of it is it comes with a stirrup waffle, which is the best thing. Gotta love a stirrup waffle that comes with your uh, ZX Spectrum retro purchase. There's a few leaflets and manuals that come with it. But the main thing we're interested in is the Div MMC unit itself. That's a neat little package. It comes with an SD card, or rather an SD card adapter with a micro SD card inside. It appears to have come loaded with some demos and the disk operating system that the DivMMC uses to load all the tap files off the SD card. On the top of the DivMMC are a couple of joystick ports and a couple of switches to reset and reload the DivMMC. The unit slots into the back of the ZX Spectrum in the expansion port. Initially I had a little bit of trouble fitting it, I didn't want to be too rough, but I managed to get it in place. Powering on the Spectrum, we get the operating system, if you want to call it that, prompt loading, and then we can select from a number of tap files using the arrow keys at the top of the Spectrum. I'm going to have a quick look at a demo, but unfortunately that was a problem. Some of the larger demos wouldn't actually run, and for a while I wondered why. It turns out that part of the memory in this Spectrum is broken. Demos that required quite a bit of memory, pretty much all of the 48k, didn't actually work. But when I tried some of the more compressed demos, they seemed to work fine. So it looks like we're going to have to replace some of the memory chips inside the Spectrum. Here are the memory chips in question. There's a bank of four at the bottom, and a bank of four at the top. We're going to have to unsolder those from the board, clean it all up, and put in some new memory. I'm using my heat gun and a pair of tweezers here to try and get the chips off the board safely. It's quite a difficult job, and you have to take a fair bit of care doing it. Once I've done that, you can see here that everything looks more or less cleaned up, but there's still some solder inside these holes, so we're going to have to get rid of those. I'm using solder wick and my soldering iron here, along with a load of flux, but I'm not having a lot of luck at all to be honest. In the end I decided to use my solder sucker instead, with a different tip on the soldering iron just to get a little bit more heat into that. This seemed to work quite well. So with all of the chips removed, it looks a little bit like this. We've got some clean holes here, so what we're going to have to do is plug in some sockets. I'd rather put in sockets rather than solder anything directly to the board just in case I need to replace things again or change things around. So I put in a couple of sockets here. Because this is through hole, we need to somehow hold them in place. I like to use blue tack or white tack in this case to actually hold the sockets in place while I can solder them from the back. With this process done, we're going to use a modern RAM replacement. I'm using this upper RAM board that I purchased. There are some solder pads at the top. We need to pick the top two and somehow connect them together. I'm using a little bit of wire here and soldering it into place with my soldering iron. It's incredibly fiddly, I don't quite know why I was having so much trouble. But eventually I managed to get the small bit of wire in place making the connection. With that soldered together and the minimum required sockets in place, we can put the screw back on to connect the main board back to the case. And then we can take our RAM expansion and press it into the socket gently. And there we go, it's all nice and snug. The next stage now is to close up the case. To do that we have two ribbon cables that we have to place into the sockets on the left and right side of the motherboard. 
This can be a little bit tricky and you have to be careful not to wrench them or tear them when you put the top of the case back on. But once they're in place, just by pushing them straight in, we can then put the case back on top and put the screws back into place. So now let's take a look at some new modern computer games. I've plugged my Spectrum into my TV in the front room just so you can see that it's fully working. And I've downloaded some modern computer games for the Spectrum. The first one we're going to look at is Bruce Lee RX, which I believe is a modern remake of a much older game. I had a lot of fun playing this game and it's really easy and quick to load. It has some quite modern sort of sensibilities to it. It's a platformer, but it's got some nice responsive controls, kicking, punching, jumping buttons, and it's really smooth to play. The next game I'm looking at here is Last Train to Trans Central. This is a really fun little game by Quantum Sheep. I picked it up from itch.io and it's a it's great little platformer. Again, you can configure the keys, it sort of has that modern flow to it, the gameplay is quite well refined, it's a wonderful little shooter. You could imagine games like this on mobile or even on the Switch. Sometimes the look of these games isn't so different from something like Downwell. So that's the end of part one of my Modern Spectrum video series. In part two we're going to take a look at programming the ZX Spectrum. We'll be using some modern emulators, modern tools, but we'll be ultimately running on the original hardware. I'm really looking forward to taking a closer look at the ZX Spectrum and seeing what it's like to program in the modern day when we have more modern tools and a more fuller understanding of the machine, yet we're still interestingly limited by the hardware itself.